Hey, you go outside? You go outside? Getting closer, guys. Come on, babe, let's go outside. Oh, goodness, we are excited. We'll come back up here. Look at all the bees on the sunflowers. These sunflowers are giving a lovely show. Come on, bear. Hey, babies. The little goaties are officially weaning, but they still come running. Hey, guys. Hey, little ones. Oh, bear, be sweet. Check it out, guys. That's B A C. Hey, goaty girls. Hello. Hey, sweet darlings. Whenever bees uh, bunch up on the outside of the box like that, on, on the outside of the hive, it's called bearding. And it is their way of cooling the hive down. Hey, look at these peppers. There's some jalapenos on here. Jill's gonna be happy to see that. There's also a lot of fruit starting to ripen out here. Oh my goodness, look at this. That's Malabar spinach volunteering underneath the corner of this bed in the high tunnel. A little survivor, that's hilarious. I have no idea how that got back here. We moved the chickens over onto the old potato patch so they could scratch through and get any of those potato beetles that might still be remaining. Y'all cleaning it up? A little gardening chickens? Oh my goodness, guys, I was just walking to the back and I was hearing this loud sound. And I thought, what is that? And it's John Boy being a little bad goat. Look at it. <laughs> what a silly boy. Hasn't he turned out interesting looking? <laughs> hey girls. This reminds me of when my kids want the other kids to play with them, but they don't want to. And I'm like, just go play by yourself. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, goats are so funny. So the packing is coming along. Um, that's what I've been doing for the last couple of days. Pretty consistently, I haven't turned on the camera. But I've gotten a lot done and I feel very, very good about the progress we've made. You gonna go in the garden? What are you gonna do with yourself whenever we go and we have no garden for a little while, Bear? So I started out here early yesterday morning. Then Ben Turn worked on it for a while and I'm planning on getting back out here in the morning and we are tearing out the stuff that's spent to make way for some things. Like we have these okras, all these are volunteers. And I just wanted to clear stuff out and make way for those to thrive because these are gonna really start producing here in a few weeks. About the time that Nate and Jill come take the farm over. And my hope was to go ahead and replant green beans on this wall and get a couple things tucked in now so they can start enjoying harvest sooner when they get here. The last week of June into the first week of July is usually about when the garden peaks. So we're pretty much in it right now. Those cucamelons said one trellis is not enough. We want more. Just lovely. And look. They're actually getting to be pretty good sized. So if you've never grown these, they're called Mexican sour gherkins, or sometimes they're called cucamelons or mouse melons. And I have found that people either love them or hate them. If you're not down for that texture that just pops in your mouth, you're not gonna like these. They're little tiny cucumbers. 
and they're very um, kind of sour lemony I guess you could say and I think they're really tasty now are these like staple sustenance or a commodity crop no but for me I always find that it's worth it to put one trellis in the garden uh, they take a little while to get started I've found that starting these from seed usually works better for me than trying to direct sow. Sometimes with direct sowing, they're just really slow starting. Um, the pests will eat them down a lot. And if I start them in the greenhouse and transplant them out, they usually take off a lot quicker. So as you can see, that trellis behind me is pretty well covered. We'll end up with thousands of these. That's um, three plants on each side of the trellis. Like that's a what four foot wide panel one um, on each end and one in the middle at each bottom of the rainbow. So six plants are that prolific. I have made these into little pickles before. Now I've never canned them. I cannot imagine that they would hold up very well to the canning process like if you water bath can them because they're pretty fragile. Um, but if you did like refrigerator pickles just made of brine. I did some with like onions and garlic and red peppers and they were really good and they're super cute on like a charcuterie spread. All the rain and humidity has just wrecked havoc on the tomato plants, but they're still producing quite a bit. And because of this heat we've been having, they uh, taste amazing. All right guys, we are about three weeks out from our move. Between now and then, we've actually got to make a trip where we're taking the kids out to South Carolina because we want Malia to get to see it while she's here for the summer before she goes home. Um, so we're actually gonna go out there for a short visit and they're delivering our modular home. So we figured we would be there for that just to make sure it all goes smoothly and also to allow Malia to see our property and see where we're gonna be living because when she comes back, uh, that's where we'll be. And I'm finally starting to feel a little bit of a shift in my heart um, where I'm really, really just looking forward to what's next, building a new garden and starting our new homestead from scratch. And I've been like consulting with Jill on things. Like I messaged her today and said, hey, you know, do you want me to go ahead and replant these green beans or would you rather me leave the space blank for you to do it? And different things like that. I'm, I'm really kind of setting in my mind that this is Jill's garden. And that is helping me a lot with this mental thing. And I'm sharing the process with you guys because, I mean, I think it's important. I know a lot of you are in limbo. A lot of you are dreaming of expansion or of doing something different. And while, that was just tart tomato. And, you know, right now, I'm having a lot of big feelings. My kids are having a lot of big feelings. I mean, we're having to really work through some stuff. Um, as we started having a really hard time yesterday, we were packing in his room and he just started to feel really overwhelmed. And I've just been talking through all these things with my kids. The big feelings we're having are also valid and just sweeping them under the rug is not gonna make anything better. So we're dealing with those things. Also really focusing a lot on the excitement and the opportunity and what we're looking forward to. You know, keeping it positive, but also validating the struggle and the grief of big transition. Mm. I see these down here calling my name. I'm pretty sure these are volunteer black cherry tomatoes from last year. Y'all, someone told me recently that they... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I got distracted. Are you ever harvesting and you pick one and you're like, oh, that's gonna be a good one. Someone told me recently that they were really disappointed in the flavor of their homegrown tomatoes. And I did a video years ago. This is like one of my first videos to ever kind of take off and help grow my channel was about growing tomatoes. I'm gonna put a link to it down below. I really love growing tomatoes. My, my tomatoes this year are not really a grand reflection of my passion for growing tomatoes just because it has been such a hands-off year and uh, rough conditions and they're not doing super great. As I've said before, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do this gardening year and have grace for yourself if you are in a situation <laughs> where you're doing as I do. <laughs> I will go ahead and give you a tip right now though. The number one thing that lends to the flavor of your tomatoes is watering. So 
I always keep an eye on my forecast before I harvest tomatoes. In fact, we're supposed to start getting some rain tomorrow, which means I am gonna bring a bucket out here and harvest all of these tomatoes, probably get my kids to come help me. Because you, you basically want to harvest your tomatoes dry. Rain is just gonna water down the flavor, it dilutes it. If you can harvest them in the middle of the afternoon when it's the hottest part of the day, and preferably two or three days since the tomatoes have been watered. Now you might not be able to go two or three days if you're growing in containers and they're starting to like wilt or curl, but in the ground you can usually go a couple of days at least, even when it's really hot without watering them. And that's when you're gonna get the best flavor because essentially the hottest part of the day when the tomatoes are allowed to dry out a little bit is when you're gonna get the highest concentration of sugars in those tomatoes and that's where you're gonna get the best flavor. Another thing, is that a little bit of stress actually does lend a better flavor because the chemicals that the plant produces in order to protect itself, like from pests, just the things that they produce to protect themselves, we actually um, experience those chemicals as more profound flavor in the tomato. Which this year, I wonder, because I haven't been taking great care of my plants, if that's why these tomatoes taste so good. <laughs> They're really stressed out, bless them. <laughs> Good night, look at the stalk of that sunflower, that's nuts. I'm thinking this variety, which was my experiment variety that I let go completely wild. I think these are sun golds. I'm not sure, but they taste so amazing. They're so sweet. And see, this is how a tomato plant grows when left to its own devices, just all sprawled over, all over the place. They do not grow upright like we might believe. That's just what we try to train them to do. These seriously may be the best cherry tomatoes I've ever eaten. They're so good. I need to save some of the seeds from them. I didn't have this plant marked, but if it's a hybrid sun gold, they won't be the same. But if it's one that's been stabilized, I'm just not sure. I don't remember what it came from. Bear, I wish you liked tomatoes. No, no thanks. So I asked you guys to pray for my dad the other day. He was in the hospital and he still is in the hospital, but he has had a breakthrough uh, yesterday. I went and visited with him today and he is much improving. Huge relief. They were giving us some pretty grim sounding news and it's been a very scary week. Um, it's been an extremely emotionally exhausting week and I am so relieved today. I had not planned on picking the camera up just because I was completely overwhelmed with everything and worrying about him and just all the things felt so big. But having that breakthrough and feeling hope come through that, uh, definitely, I'm definitely better now, thankfully. So thank you guys so much for praying. Bear, are you hot or something? Oh, I wanna show you guys something else. Come over here. Ben Turn actually got some goats. They're here right now. Look at this male goat. He's monstrous. Hey, big boy. Hey, big old boy. So Ben Turn has been working here with us for two and a half years now. And, uh, you know, I did an interview with him. I'll link it in case you missed it. And he is not moving with us. We are thankful for the time we had with him, but he's known for a long time that he wasn't gonna be going when we go. He knew when we he started here that that was our eventual plan. And uh, he has just been learning with us at our farm and getting prepared for like his own homesteading venture. And over the time that he has started here with us, he's gotten into chickens and pigs, and he is now a proud goat daddy to some lovely sonnins here's the other ones and y'all saw that big old butt gosh he's massive now i'm actually gonna put a picture up on the screen i looked out my bedroom window the other day and that sonnin was standing on his back feet there's actually two sonnin bucks um in there but he was standing on his back feet reaching up on top of our barn which is taller than a grown man can y'all believe that? I was like, oh my goodness, he is a monstrous goat. Uh, but Ben Turn got these beautiful well-bred Sonnens and he is getting his fences ready for them at his farm. And 
we are uh, keeping them over here. We told him he could keep them here for the time being. They're kind of keeping the pasture down over there. That gives him some time to make a space for him. But I'm so proud of him. After two and a half years of learning goat husbandry here, I find it really sweet that uh, the end of his time here with us is marked with his own first herd of goats, which is pretty cool. And I love that he's doing his own thing and getting, you know, his own breed to, tr to try out different than what we're doing. It's just really neat. I sat with my kids this morning and we looked at the calendar. And we talked about the days that we have left here. And I was just talking to my children about enjoying this time, even though we're so much anticipating the next season because it's gonna fly by. Uh, we are down to counting really in days how, how long we're gonna be here. We're gonna be actually in this house for three more weeks and part of that we're gonna be out of town. Um, and Jill and Nathan are actually gonna come stay at the house while we're gone. Kinda start probably bringing some of their stuff over. It's really nice having your best friends move in because there's kind of a fluidity to it that's really nice. Like being able to call Jill, hey, what do you want me to do in the garden? Or her being able to come over and work on things. And it's just very, very nice. That is such a blessing in this transition. Um, there are so many blessings in this transition, to be honest, I just can't even count them all. It's, it's hard, but it's also so very good. There, you need to go drink some water, dude. Starting to look like a blank slate in this house. And um, I'm definitely feeling it for sure. Hey, William. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Are you looking out there at the garden? Are you looking out there at the garden? That is a lovely view, isn't it? <laughs> I agree. A lot of you told me that you know, I would probably start detaching here towards the end and I would stop seeing this so much as my space. Um, and that's, that's definitely beginning to happen. Um, you know, I'm kind of focusing on being able to hand it to Jill the best I possibly can, you know, in the best condition I can. But I'm starting to get really excited about building our new space. Uh, Maya is so completely in love with our land. When he talks about it, he just, lights up like a firefly. He's so precious. <laughs> and um, I'm feeling it too. I think I'm, we process differently. And so I'm feeling a lot of the, the grief and stuff of leaving here before we actually go. And he'll probably feel it afterwards, but it is very exciting what we're going into. So that's the update, the Roots and Refuge move update. Um, we'll have more to share with you guys soon. There's some really cool stuff happening as we're making these big leaps towards our last days here at Roots and Refuge Farm 1.0. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening. I bless you. Until next time.